I've had offers that look exactly like yours. So you have no intention of wholesaling this property. So that's where I'm at right now. What I don't want to do is tie this thing up with a tire kicker and they go in there and for 10 days I'm off the market and, and they come back and they're like, well, let's renegotiate. You know, I get it. I'm in the business too. No one likes to do due diligence on something they don't have a contract on because then you might waste your time. Exactly. So, so I get that. But at the same time, I also don't want to go off market and, and lose time. I mean, I will sell it to your guy, but I really feel like he needs to get in there and get his head around it. I mean, at least go do a walkthrough. If your guy's a flipper, I don't think he needs 10 days to figure out if he wants the deal. I think he could walk it and be like, okay, you know, I got to do some things here, but I don't know why we need 10 days due diligence. I, I don't, I can't see him doing a formal inspection. Maybe he is. He is also based out of state. So essentially when we get a property under contract, we do always have a third party inspection performed. Um, have our inspectors go through everything with a fine tooth comb. And at the same time that they are in the property, our project manager or someone for our, from our contracting crew will also be there walking the house with the inspector, compiling a scope of work. They're the ones that are going to communicate that with our buyer to let them know that this is where our rehab budget is at. And hopefully that will be within the range of what we had already estimated it to be based off of the initial analysis. What are you projecting it's going to take to finish? Give me just a second. I'm driving with my knees right now trying to find it. Don't crash. I won't. But let's talk this out. So you've got your price. You think that price works as long as you stay within a certain budget. You want to do some due diligence make sure that there's nothing weird going on that would push you outside of your initial budget. Exactly, exactly. And you want 10 days due diligence to do that with a thousand dollar earnest money. Yes, again, we need to have our team get in there so they can get in and make their scope of work to make sure that they have correctly budgeted the job. I mean, I could see if we could potentially bring the inspection resolution period down. Um, I would just have to refer to our contracting crew to make sure that they have the ability to get in and have everything ready to go by the end of that window. That would be helpful, certainly. Maybe a little better earnest money would be helpful. It can still be contingent. I get that. I just want to know that I've got somebody committed. It's it's easy to walk from a thousand bucks. You have the closing at how far out? Like what? Thirty days? I think is what you guys yeah, put. It was, it was a thirty day close. Yeah, yeah, so that's typical. But you know, I've had a lot of people walk from a thousand bucks if something better comes along. Maybe a bigger commitment there. And then one thing that I would like would be I just did a flat fee listing on this, as you know, because I don't want to spend money on a listing. If I could keep it active and just see if I get more showings and a backup offer, that would be helpful. If I mark it pending and I go off for 10 days, that would be hurtful to then have you guys back out. We wouldn't mind if you were taking backup offers, but the house, once it goes under contract, will technically have to be marked as pending within our system. You and I could sign a contract. You and I both know we have an executed contract and then I just leave it alone and let showings continue. Okay. Because I did a flat fee, there's no one caring or watching what I'm doing on the listing. I just want you to know that's what we're doing. I'm not misrepresenting or not being transparent with you. And again, right. all I would do is I would just let it roll. If someone comes in with another offer, I would tell them, you know, I gotta wait till I'm outside of contingencies with you guys and see if you guys go hard, you know, like go forward. Yeah. I guess a better way to put it would be don't go forward. <laughs> and then I've got some backups sitting there on the sidelines. Does that make sense? Right, yes. Otherwise, I'm going to be really reluctant. Part of the reason why is I've had a lot of wholesalers making offers. I'm a wholesaler, so I get it. And a lot of wholesalers come in, they make a full price offer. The intention, the strategy is to drag it along and renegotiate. I've been on the receiving. Oh, that sucks. That's the most terrible business model. I wholesale a lot. I never do that. You know, I renegotiate, but only if I have to because new information comes available. But I make my best offer forward first. I believe in my offer. I stand behind my offer. I'm just like really frustrated right now because I've had offers that look exactly like yours. But after talking for five minutes, very quickly identify, okay, you're not even a real buyer. 
You're going to push this out to your list, see if somebody bites. If they do, then you'll move forward. If they don't, you'll back out or you'll come renegotiate at me at half price or something, you know? So I just don't want that situation to happen. Understood. Yeah, in full transparency, as far as where the rehab budget is right now, they're at about 35K. To finish it? Yes. Okay. So you have no intention of wholesaling this property? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No. Um, you know, some of these houses, we're seeing six figure spreads on them by the time it's all said and done. If you can pull off an adequate retail level flip in this area, um, the, the profit margin is really, really solid. I mean, if you could, before we sign, if you could just go do a walkthrough, it, it shows a lot better than it is, to be honest. So yeah. if you haven't seen it yet, you might want to just walk it once and be like, yeah, I, I think we're going to have to redo too much to keep a 35 budget. Or you might be like, no, we could pull this off and get this done, not a problem. Still pending inspection, but I think you should at least get some eyes on it to see how you feel. Okay. I want to sign with you, but before we sign it, is there any way you could do a 10-minute walkthrough? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'd feel much better if you at least walked it. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the conversation I had with my buyer. I mean, as long as there's no major big ticket items that need to be addressed, such as the electrical or the sewer lines, it's going to be really critical that we have nice retail level finishes and not any type of shoddy handiwork in the house. Relatively small issues, but when you have enough of those issues, um, that can really make or break your ARV on the home. What do you think in the back end is, if you do it right? Uh, we felt confident with about 275. Okay. That was our safe. That was our safe yeah, number. Yeah, that's my safe number. In a perfect situation, we may be able to hit that, but we always just try to hope for the best yeah. and plan for the worst. But I mean, again, you never know. If the right buyer comes along and the work is done well, maybe we could get 299. If you ever wanted to try it out with our brokerage, we'd be more than happy to help. Okay, definitely. Well, when can you stop by there and, and take a look at it? I'm gonna try to get over there um, Late this afternoon. Early. Okay. Why don't you get over there, shoot me a text after you've walked it, and let's jump on the call and talk about it and just see if you still want to go forward. Sure thing. Okay. Well, yeah, I will um, I'll do everything I can to get over there today. And, okay. Um, you know, we'll just double check that he feels confident with that rehab number, and I'll see if my crew can get in there um, ASAP. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Savannah. Bye. Talk to you.